Hello everybody, Andrew Blake from the digitalaudiomanual.com and today we're going to take this basic vocal you just keep on. and then we're going to turn it into this. Alright, so the first thing, let's make sure we have a vocal chain on this vocal. Go to my inserts, the search field, I type in vocal. It shows me the vocal chain. I highlight that and select it. Hit the E to open it. And I'm not going to go in any particular order. I'm going to kind of go with the modules that interest me first in terms of the sound I'm trying to get. Then we'll deal with corrections as we go. And the first thing I want to focus in on is compression. So I'm going to go into the clean category, click on this compression option, activate it. And I have four different kinds of compressors here. I'm going to choose the black valve. And if we leave things just at their defaults, we really only have two knobs to worry about. The amount of compression and the output. I'm going to turn the amount of compression so I can hear what happens to this vocal. First, I'm going to turn it all the way down, 0%. As I play my vocal, keep on, on I can see there's no activity on the meter. I'm going to turn the compressor all the way up. And now I can see there's a huge reduction. And also I can hear that the vocal has been dipped in volume. So I'm going to experiment with this compression knob from zero to full and listen to the difference a bit. All the way off. And then all the way on. And ultimately I'm looking for some kind of balance to where I can hear the compressor is working, but not overdoing it. And hopefully the effect this is going to have is anything that she sings a little bit quieter, that stuff will be brought up a bit. And anything where she really nails it or hits a vowel that really pierces through, those things will be brought back a little bit. What we're trying to achieve is kind of an overall balance on everything. Right now it's about 36%. So let's hear what that did. You just keep on taking, taking, taking. Sounds pretty good. Now what we want to determine is did we lose any level? We can change with the output. We're going to turn the effect on and off a bit. You just keep on taking, taking, taking. It's actually pretty good. Let's go ahead and change the level just for exaggeration's sake and hear the difference. I'm going to turn it down. Keep on turn it up a bit. Um, and obviously that vocal is louder than the original. If we turn it off. Keep on. So we'll bring that back and compare it. And that's pretty good. And that's really all we have to do with that, which is again nice the way they've set up the vocal chain because they've kind of cut down the amount of knobs that we have and in many ways limited our choices. If we actually went to the black valve compressor, there's other controls on that black valve that aren't available right here. We've only got certain choices and then we just have to make those choices. So all we did on that one was set the compression till we basically heard it engage and then we turned our output down to make sure that we didn't change the output from the original vocal. So that handles our compression to start with. Let's move on to the EQ. I'm still going to stay in the clean area for now. I'm going to go to this EQ right below the compressor. I'm going to turn that on. And again we have various options for an EQ. We have the studio, we have the new P1A, and we have this new M5. I'm going to take this M5 and although we have a few knobs here, again, the choices have been pretty simplified. And once you understand that, this won't be so intimidating. The main thing we have here is an option to dip out the mids, raise the highs, or possibly raise the lows a little bit. Now, because this is a female vocalist, I'm not going to raise anything in the low area. And because these samples were probably recorded with a very high-end microphone already in a professional studio, more than likely there won't be a lot of mid to dip out of it. Unlike if I was recording in my own studio, but those are the two changes I'm going to make. I'm going to dip a little bit out of the mids. I'm going to raise a little bit in the high. So let's see what happens with that. As I play the vocal, I'm going to start turning up the attenuation in the mids here. And we can hear it made a big dip. Let's move the frequency around a little bit. Again, we don't have a lot of option where we can move it. Right there, it's kind of thinning it out. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to bring that attenuation back up. So we just have a slight dip there. Now I'm going to move to the high end and do a boost. And move that around with the frequency. At that point, it's a little bit too much of the mid-highs. Right there, I'm getting the high of the voice. Now I'm going to bring that back down. Just some mild changes. Now let's compare it. Gives us just a little bit more clarity on that voice. So I'm going to leave that one for now. And again, that's all the choices we have. 
We could move on to the low end here and do this big boost in the low end, but we're not going to do any of that. All right, let's experiment with saturation. We're going to move into the character category, and we have a saturator. I'm going to select that, turn it on. Right now, the drive is set down at zero. That's the first knob I'm going to experiment with. Let's play the vocal and turn that up. Taking, taking, taking. We can hear there's a certain amount of distortion that starts to come in there. It's very subtle. Turn it on and off a bit. Oh, taking, taking. Saturation has the effect of thinning out the vocal. It almost trims off some excess sound. Most of the time it will help things cut through. The important thing is to use it tastefully. And a nice option that we have is to be able to zero in on what part of the frequency we want to affect. We can turn on this filter bank option. And this sets the saturation over the particular frequency. You can have it go over the whole frequency from the bottom to the top. We can trim this back and then we can move this around to whatever specific frequencies we want. I'm going to turn this off. Let me play the vocal and move this around and see if you can hear the difference. Oh, taking, Turning it on. Taking, taking I'm going to pull it down from the top. Taking, taking, from the bottom. Now, in that context, it's very hard to hear the difference. You can hear something's happening, but you're not exactly sure what. And that's where we have an option for the solo button. If I do that same thing, turn the solo button on, unmistakably, you can tell what's happening. Listen to the difference now. Solo button on. And I'm going to move it from the bottom. Now we can hear the saturation is only affecting the very high. And I can move this down. So in that way, I can really define exactly what part of the frequency I want my saturation to affect. For this vocal, I'm going to go for the higher end and ignore some of the bottom part. So in order to do that, I'm going to take the high end all the way up. Take the bottom down to normal again. Now I'm going to bring the bottom up until I hear the difference. Very obvious, almost a telephone effect. I'm going to bring that back down a little bit. And that's what I want to affect on this vocal. Just a little bit of extra saturation on the high end. Turn the solo button off. We also have a mix knob if we want to kind of bring this in different levels. Let's experiment with that. I'm going to turn it down all the way. And then turn it up all the way. So at the very bottom, the vocal turns a little dull for me. And at the very top, it becomes a little bit too brittle. So let's find our balance with the mix. I find it a little bit off of the center is works good. Now the last thing, let's check our output. Turn the effect off. Turn it back on. It's pretty good just like it is. Now again, with this output, because we have a mix knob, the output isn't going to completely control this. So I'm just going to leave it just like that. Now if I turn the saturator on and off, let's try that. Saturation has definitely brought some extra brightness to that vocal. Question is, is it too much? Have we overdone it? I like it right now. We're going to proceed on. Then we'll recheck later and compare it. All right, next up, let's look at the exciter. Go right above the saturator and select that. Turn it on. With the exciter, we have two knobs. So we've really been narrowed down on what we can do here. There's no drop down. Let's play our vocal and turn everything up all the way and see what happens. Keep on taking, taking, taking. And that definitely thins it out a little bit more. And again, a little bit more on the high end. Let's experiment with the clarity first. I'm going to turn that up and down. Just keep on taking, taking, taking. We can definitely hear a little bit more high end coming up as we turn up that clarity. Let's go for a moderate setting. We'll try it again. Keep on taking, taking, taking. I'm going to go for where I can hear it, but try not to make it overbearing. Now let's work with the amount and see what happens. Taking, taking, taking. So I'm only going to put a little bit of that in there because the saturation is already working on the high end. I'm going to go a little bit lighter on this exciter, but it does give us a little bit of extra clarity, which is exactly what it claims to do. Let's turn the effect on and off and see what we have. Keep on taking, taking, taking. We definitely have a more present vocal at this point. Let's turn the exciter on and off specifically and see what happens. Just keep on 
taking, taking, taking. It's a little bit harder to hear. We'll experiment more with that when we hear the mix with it. But we'll leave those settings just that way for now. All right, at this point, I want to start hearing some effects on this voice. So I have some idea where I'm going. I'm going to work with the delay a bit here. I'm going to turn on the delay. Just turning it on, we hear no effect because the send knob is all the way down. We have three choices for our delay, the mono, the stereo, and the ping pong. Let's go ahead and choose the ping pong. Typical delay is an eighth dotted, so I'm going to spin my time up to that. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn up the send. Let's keep on taking, taking, taking. And that immediately brings it alive. And just like we had the filter bank up on our saturator, we can bring this delay into a filter bank as well. Typically, we want to dull down the delay a little bit. We don't want that high-end shine so much on the delay. So if we start out playing this and turn on the filter bank, and now turn on the solo, again, we can kind of move this section around. We'll hear it affect the high-end or the lower end of the spectrum. And that's kind of what I want right there. A little bit more mid on that delay. Now let's add a little bit of this ducker in here. That's just a great effect. It allows the vocal to come through, push the delay to the back. We start out with the release all the way down. In some ways it'll create a pumping effect with that delay. And I want this delay to be a little bit smoother. I'm gonna bring the release up a little bit. That keeps the delay from snapping back a little bit too quick after it's been ducked. We can experiment with the feedback. You really hear the release when you turn the solo back off again. You just keep on taking now that the solo's off, we want to turn that send up a little bit more so we can hear it. And that's it right there for the delay. All right, let's try some reverb on this. Again, turning on the reverb doesn't do anything right away. We have a few different kinds of reverbs. Let's go down to try this lush pop option. You can see it changes the wave a little bit. And we'll turn up the send. And right away, we can hear this is very bright. And once again, we're going to dull down the effect a bit. We go up to the filter bank, turn that on, hit the solo button. Turn the solo back off. Just keep on. That's a lot more pleasant. Let's see what the ducker does to this. Taking, taking. Adjusting the release a little bit so it doesn't jump back too quick. Now, if we adjust the time of this reverb, we're going to either get a large cathedral sound or a kind of a small room. Let's change that around. Taking, taking, taking. Let's turn the reverb on and off and see how it sounds. Taking, taking, taking. Adds a nice dimension to that. And last but not least on our effects, let's check out the imager. I'm going to turn that on. With the imager, both the delay knob and the send knob have to be turned up for you to even hear anything. So I'm going to start by turning both of those up all the way. And that obviously thickens it up. Turning up the formant also increases the intensity of this. Taking, taking, taking. And really from that point, you just kind of have to experiment. Because it doesn't matter if I start with the send knob or the delay knob. I bring this back down a little bit. They both kind of have the same effect. Here's the difference. You just keep on. I'm mostly going for an area where I can hear the effect, but not all the way. Just trying to strike some kind of balance by having the sound affected and not being too dry. Now let's turn the imager on and off. Taking, taking, you just keep on. Definitely widens the sound out. You also have the option to turn the solo button on, which allows you to hear the imager without the reverb and the delay. Turn that back off. Just keep on. Okay, so there's a couple more things I want to do just to round this off. The first thing I'm going to do is add a second compressor down in the character area. Select that, turn it on. Again, I'm going to use black valve. And again, I'm going to adjust the compression and output. As you get more modules and you stack them on top more and more, it becomes a little more difficult to match the outputs. And that's where the solo button comes in. I can solo this compression. And then I can just hear the vocal with the compression. I can check the level. Good enough. Then another thing I want to do at this point, add a second EQ, try to round off this tone a little bit. I'm going to turn this on. For this option, I'm going to go to the P1A. I'm going to make a slight boost on this middle area. Change the frequency. Then I'm going to use the attenuation on the top area. And then just make a slight boost in attenuation in the low area. I'm going to bypass those. Fills that vocal out just a little bit more. 
Back at the beginning, we haven't used the cut filter yet. I'm going to turn that on, make a slight adjustment there. And then the last thing I want to do, after we've done all this processing to the vocal, I'm going to go back to my original EQ, and now I'm going to actually add some of this lower end, just to try to fill this vocal out a little bit more. And that's it. So let's listen to what we have. So that sounds pretty good. I'll make these files available. You can download them if you're a member of the Digital Audio Manual. Make your own mix, and you can also get this preset. So hopefully those tips were helpful. Use some of those changes in your own vocals. Have some fun with it, and I'll see you next time. All right, it's gonna wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we built our own preset in the vocal chain and through the different compressors, learned what the different settings did, the M5 EQ, and the P1A, checked out all those settings, experimented with the tape saturator, learned how the filter bank can affect these things using the solo button, worked with the exciter, and the delay and the reverb and the imager. Then we made some fine tuning adjustments. Got that much closer to just being more proficient with this vocal chain. And we'll continue to explore all these different features and functions with Cubase. As always, it's great to have you guys here and I'll see you on the next video.